Enrico Fermi is one of the great physicists, legendary Italian physicists, who laid many of the foundations of modern 20th century physics. The Fermi paradox is probably the thing he spent least time on, actually. It's almost one throwaway remark. The question is, where are they? By they, I mean aliens. We know that we live in a big old galaxy, in a big old universe. The Milky Way galaxy we now know has something like 400 billion suns, and we now know that most of those suns have planetary systems around them. And so there's a lot of real estate, and there's been plenty of time for civilizations to develop. The Fermi paradox at its heart is the statement that, notwithstanding the fact that there have been billions of years on billions of worlds for civilizations to arise, we see no evidence of any of them in the galaxy at all. So the paradox is, why? A possible answer to the Fermi paradox might be that alien life is fundamentally different from life as we know it. Here on Earth, life is carbon-based and relies on water as a solvent. But what if life elsewhere in the universe is based on entirely different biochemistry? The theory known as the different kind of life considers the possibility of life based on silicon instead of carbon. Silicon, like carbon, can form complex molecules and could potentially support life in environments very different from our own. Our instruments and techniques are designed to find life as we know it, carbon-based and reliant on water. Silicon-based life might not emit oxygen, methane, or other gases that we associate with biological activity. Establishing contact would require an understanding of their biology and the development of new communication techniques. Another possibility is that the galaxy is simply too vast. The distances between stars are so immense that even if an advanced civilization on the other side of our galaxy had the most powerful radio transmitters imaginable, the signals would become incredibly weak by the time they reached us. This dilution of signals means that by the time they travel across such vast distances, they may be too faint for us to detect with our current technology. Now perhaps we can build a spacecraft capable of traveling a few light years to a nearby star system, but you can't construct a spacecraft that can traverse the entire galaxy. This suggests that even if extraterrestrial civilizations exist, they might be facing similar challenges, making interstellar travel and communication incredibly difficult. It wasn't until about 4.6 billion years ago that our solar system formed. Earth, our home, formed shortly after. And it took another billion years for life to appear on our planet. From simple single-celled organisms, it took around 3.5 billion years for complex life and intelligent beings, like us, to evolve. Now, Let's consider the sheer scale of the universe. There are billions of stars in our galaxy alone, and many of them have planets in the habitable zone where conditions might be right for life. But just because conditions are right doesn't mean intelligent life will definitely develop. Here's where the early bird theory comes in. It suggests that humans might be among the first intelligent civilizations in the universe. Given the vast timeline of the universe, it's possible that other civilizations simply haven't had enough time to evolve. This theory is both exciting and humbling. It means we could be among the first to reach a level of technological advancement capable of exploring the cosmos. But it also means we have a unique responsibility to preserve and advance our civilization. If I was to guess why we see no evidence of other civilizations out there, the so-called Great Silence is what astronomers call it, is because there aren't any and there never have been any. The reason I guess that, and I emphasize it's a guess, is biology. So if you look at the history of life on Earth, then we see that life began 3.8 billion years ago, let's say. But then we see for the best part of 3 billion years on this planet that there's nothing more complex than a single cell. And there could be good biological reasons for that. One that springs to mind is the evolution of what's called the eukaryotic cell, which form all multicellular living things on the planet. Those cells, which seem to be prerequisite for complex multicellular life, evolved once on this planet as far as we can tell. And so it seems that there is a very unusual evolutionary event at some point that lead the foundations for us. 
If it typically is the case that it takes 4 billion years from cell to civilization, then I think there may be very few planets in a typical galaxy which are stable enough for long enough for that process to proceed. I think there's one civilization in the Milky Way galaxy, and there only has ever been one, and there might only ever be one, and that's us. The rise and fall theory suggests that civilizations, much like rare flowers, bloom and die. They rise to prominence, achieve technological advancements, and then, for various reasons, they decline and vanish. Given the immense timescales and vast distances involved in our galaxy, it's possible that no two civilizations ever exist at the same time. This theory proposes that the universe could be filled with the remains of ancient civilizations. Their technology, their art, their achievements, all could be out there, waiting to be discovered. But because of the timing, we never overlap with these other civilizations. The Self-Destruction Hypothesis if the views of experts such as Stephen Hawking are anything to go by, the technical development of a civilization is always accompanied by a huge snag. It inevitably results in the self-destruction of the community concerned. In this regard, the genius who died in 2018 listed various, sometimes unintended factors, that could bring about the end of a culture. In addition to genetically modified pathogens, these include galloping greenhouse effects. Here, Venus might well be a culprit, as well as nuclear wars. Unfortunately, our own species is no exception. According to Hawking, to avert our own demise, it's essential to colonize extraterrestrial celestial bodies. But perhaps the extraterrestrial civilizations also took to heart a principle that we humans are only too happy to ignore. Some experts are throwing their hands up in horror at the attempts we have made to make contact. If the information about our species and Earth that we send into space aboard space probes were to fall into the hands of an aggressive civilization, it could form the basis of a large-scale invasion attack. The remaining aliens, fearful of such a scenario, might therefore do their utmost to remain undetected for as long as possible. There's an idea in this field, in trying to explain the Fermi paradox, called the Great Filter. So let's think about what it would mean for a Great Filter to lie in our future. That would mean that civilizations do arise in the Milky Way galaxy and get to somewhere like the position that we are at now. So they develop rocketry, they develop nuclear power, nuclear weapons, for example. They industrialize. But then there's a filter in the future that stops them becoming true spacefaring civilizations, so stops them becoming multi-planetary species and stops them ultimately traveling between solar systems to begin to colonize a galaxy. So why might that be? Why might there be a filter waiting for us in our not too distant future that's gonna stop us from becoming an interplanetary species and ultimately traveling out beyond our solar system? I don't think it's technology. As far as I can see, I don't see anything in the laws of nature in principle that would stop us from becoming an interstellar species. It could be that our knowledge, our scientific prowess exceeds our wisdom, exceeds our political skill. It could be that once a civilization develops the means to destroy itself in the form, for example, of nuclear weapons or biological weapons, or maybe some kind of a lack of control of AI, who knows? If you look back through our recent history, there have been several occasions that we know about where we came very close to destroying ourselves, or at least setting us back to the Stone Age. For example, where there could have been nuclear launches and weren't. I'm sure there are many others that we don't know about. There's the challenge of climate change. We're completely incapable of coming together at the moment as a global civilization to address that challenge that could set our civilization back so it might just be almost a law of nature. The zoo hypothesis posits that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations are aware of us and are actively observing Earth, much like zookeepers watch over animals in a zoo. According to this theory, these civilizations have established a sort of galactic quarantine, deliberately avoiding contact with us to allow for natural evolution and socio-cultural development, much as a conservationist would protect a natural habitat from outside interference. Under this hypothesis, 
the Milky Way could be teeming with intelligent life, yet these advanced beings choose to remain hidden or unobtrusive. They may be waiting for a particular developmental milestone or ethical standard to be reached before they make themselves known. This could be likened to a cosmic test, with humanity as unaware participants. Such a scenario would explain the eerie silence of the cosmos and the lack of physical evidence for extraterrestrial visitations. It suggests a universe where intelligent life is plentiful but intentionally discreet, and where Earth and its inhabitants are part of a vast unseen experiment or observation. Imagine civilizations that have navigated the perils of their technological adolescence, avoided self-destruction, and progressed to a point where they can traverse galaxies, manipulate cosmic structures, and perhaps even control the very fabric of space-time. Such civilizations, having achieved a near-godlike status, could be observing younger civilizations like ours, guiding or simply studying us in a manner we cannot yet understand, this perspective invites us to ponder our own future. If humanity manages to survive for millions of years, transcending our current limitations and expanding our understanding of the universe, what might we become? The thought is staggering. Millennia from now, we could be the advanced beings in someone else's zoo hypothesis, guardians of a younger civilization embarking on its own journey through the stars. Now, it's possible that there are many civilizations out there, but the advanced civilizations choose to remain hidden, sometimes called the Dark Forest Hypothesis or the Quarantine Hypothesis. Let's imagine that civilizations, when they get technologically advanced, also get intellectually and morally advanced. Let's say that they choose, perhaps for good reason, to remain hidden because they don't want to draw attention to themselves. Let's say it's inevitable that if you think about it carefully and you think there are other advanced civilizations out there, you choose to remain silent. You hide yourself as best you can. Maybe that's a logical thing to do. I find it difficult to believe, given human history, that that's the way intelligent civilizations behave. We certainly haven't made any attempt to remain hidden so far. We broadcast radio signals out to the stars. We've launched on our space probes like Voyager Pulsar maps, which show the location of our solar system should any other civilization find it. We've tried at every opportunity to broadcast our existence. Carl Sagan argued that a sufficiently advanced civilization, a civilization that can build interstellar spacecraft and communicate across interstellar distances, perhaps is wise enough to have overcome those primitive instincts. The instinct to cause trouble, to fight wars, to colonize, to walk over other civilizations. Perhaps it's inevitable that with technological advance ultimately comes wisdom. Maybe it's like Star Trek. Maybe it's the prime directive. Maybe it's morally certain that if you're sufficiently advanced, you decide to take the position that you will never introduce yourself or interfere with another civilization. But it's a hypothesis. A possible answer to the Fermi paradox the question of why there are no civilizations is because the Earth is pretty much unique in the Milky Way galaxy, in that the climate, the conditions on Earth were stable enough for long enough for life to go from cell to civilization. But if you think about that, that's a big ask. We know that we live in a violent universe. We know there are supernova explosions all over the place. We know that there have been impacts on the Earth, the famous impact that wipes out the large dinosaurs. There's been no impact big enough to break the unbroken chain of life for four billion years. So maybe, maybe it's the case that whilst there are billions of planets, which may have liquid water on the surface, may have oceans that can support life, it may be that none of those planets in the Milky Way galaxy have been stable enough for long enough to produce civilizations, so that will be a property of the planet itself. The so-called Rare Earth Hypothesis Ever since ancient times, people have asked the question, is the world a dream? Is everything around us an illusion created by some higher power to test us? In modern terms, this translates to, is the universe a computer game? Are we just dancing puppets, obeying the laws of some advanced computer out there in the universe? Could everything we perceive be a fake? 
This theory gained tremendous popularity with the Matrix series. In the Matrix, what we thought was real was actually a computer simulation implanted into our brains by advanced beings. Reality, as we knew it, was entirely fabricated. So, is it possible that we live in a simulation? Interestingly, some argue that it might be possible. Life is incredibly complex. Plants perform calculations that our most advanced quantum computers cannot replicate. So, in many ways, nature operates with a level of sophistication that outstrips our current technological capabilities. Simulating the weather, for instance, involves tracking the motion of trillions upon trillions of atoms. Yet, this complexity might not necessarily rule out the simulation theory. Quantum mechanics plays a crucial role in the functionality of our universe. If quantum principles were simulated at a fundamental level, it might be possible to replicate the universe, even if it's incredibly challenging. Imagine a super-advanced civilization with technology far beyond ours. They might harness computational power and quantum mechanics in ways we can't even fathom. They could simulate the universe down to the tiniest subatomic particles. If this is the case, what we perceive as reality might be a detailed simulation designed to be indistinguishable from the real thing. So, could we be living in a simulation? Are governments hiding the truth about alien visits? Or are civilizations like rare orchids blooming and dying in the vast garden of the galaxy? Do you know another explanation for the Fermi Paradox? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of the Fermi Paradox. Want to dive deeper? Become a curious deep diver and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more content. Who knows what we might find as we venture further. Until next time, stay curious.